Okay, so lesson 11 from A Course in Miracles. I'm going to go through this lesson with a slightly uh, love addiction focus uh, just for today. So my meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. This is the first idea we have had that is related to a major phase of the correction process, the reversal of the thinking of the world. It seems as if the world determines what you perceive. Today's idea introduces the concept that your thoughts determine the world you see. Be glad indeed to practice the idea in its initial form, for in this idea is your release made sure. The key to forgiveness lies in it. So from this first paragraph, today's idea introduces the concept that your thoughts determine the world you see. So most people think that the world is determining uh, what what the, what they're thinking. So the power is projected like the power is in the world, not the power is in my thoughts. So here we're saying that well, the type of thoughts that are in my head is what's creating the type of world I'm seeing, as opposed to what everyone thinks is like I'm just responding to what's in the world. Uh, so the, the course is basically talking about that you are getting more power when you realize it's your thoughts which are creating the world you see rather than the world that is you're reacting to. Now, if we look at um, the research of teachers like Dr. Hawkins, we'll see that when your ego is more inflated, and I'm going to talk to this like in a love, ad love addiction type phenomena, then basically because you're not getting any connection from the light and love of God from within, then you're going to be, uh, and your ego is very, very inflated, that means then you're going to be tuning in to like a radio station of very, very dark thoughts in your head. And the thoughts that will be in your head are usually, would, could possibly be very addictive in nature, which is like the power where I get payoff from or get a hit from is from something outside of myself. And so you get these huge mind-altering hits from things like in love addiction it could be a person or it could be a response from a text or it could be whatever now because the ego is creating the illusion that the drug supply is external not from surrendering the ego and getting it from God directly on the inside then you get these huge hits there's what's called entrapment or bondage now the more the more quick the thoughts are, the more inflated the ego is, the more thinking there is, and the more the power is projected externally that a person or a text or an affirmation um, is the source or, or even conceptual ideas such as marriage or whatever it is um, are the things that will give, will give it a hit. And then it becomes mired. And so it, it seems to... It's the ego then that, that creates this world. This is also metaphysical. So people often at low vibrations are often attracted to other low vibration people because they're at the same vibration. So it's like birds of a feather stick together. It's like addicts are often attracted to other addicts. Like healthy people are repulsed by addicts. But uh, when you're in addiction, because uh, you know, you're, you're getting payoff out of it. So. It's also the thing of like, as when you're in low vibrations, then the type of thoughts that you get are similar. All addicts get the same similar types of thoughts and they see this, they're run by the same types of patterns and they're in bondage. As you start to do some spiritual work and you start to let go of these thoughts, i.e. my meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. Like my meaningless thought that... Um, this girl, um, this girl, I mean, who, who did I like, used to like? My, my teenage crush was Carrie Fisher. I used to watch Star Wars, so it'd be like, I would say that if I had a crush on, on Carrie Fisher, my meaningless thoughts about Carrie Fisher are showing me a meaningless world. I mean, you know, it's not, not Carrie Fisher is not going to be the princess that's going to save me from my misery. So, as I let that go, I'll get different thoughts and I'll see a different world. And the more I let go to God, the more positive my thoughts will become and they'll be more aligned with trust and faith and, and the more I let go, the, the nicer the world is, the more the world takes care of me, the more miracles and nicer people I meet. The more I go into, my into the darkness, 
the thoughts become darker and I see a darker world and I'm attracted to darker people and darker people are attracted to me. So paragraph two, uh, the practice periods for today, today's idea, are to be undertaken somewhat differently from the previous ones. Begin with your eyes closed and repeat the idea slowly to yourself. Then open your eyes and look about uh, near and far, up and down, anywhere, during the minute or so to be spent in using the idea, merely repeat it to yourself, being sure to do so without haste and with no sense of urgency or effort. So here again, you know, the Course is starting to say, is the world you see, it doesn't really matter with your eyes closed or with your eyes open. When you have an inflated ego, it's all equally meaningless. So it's like, if I was to see, if I was to have a photo of Carrie Fisher outside, then, you know, if I look at that, you know, I look at that, it's meaningless. If I close my eyes and I picture Carrie Fisher with my eyes closed, well, that's equally meaningless because it, it doesn't really matter if I'm seeing it out still insane. The world I'm seeing is insane, whether I'm seeing it on the outside or the inside. Uh, now, at the end of the paragraph, it says, um, merely repeat it to yourself, being sure to do so without haste and with no sense of urgency. So you're now starting to get a, a casual idea about your whatever it is that you've... The Course in Miracles use the words making things special. That's the terminology. I mean, in 12-step groups, they talk about making something your higher power. But, um, you know, whatever it is, if it's a person, whether it's a message, even if it's a concept, like getting married is special. Like getting married should, should be as equally neutral an idea as buying a bag of tea from the supermarket. You know, like you get a thought, I need to buy tea tomorrow. And then you forget it. You know, you just write it down, you forget it. It's totally neutral. Mm -hmm. There can be no obsession about, oh yeah, I need to, I've run out of peppermint tea, I need to get some. So it's a neutral thing. So it's like, that's a, that's a neutral thought. It should be equally like when a thought pops up, I'm not yet married. It should be equally dismissed with neutrality. Equally meaningless, you know, as I, I need peppermint tea. So like I think my thought, my reaction to a thought of peppermint tea is very casual and it's like neutral and it doesn't mean anything, I can function, I can get the tea tomorrow, but it doesn't take up any, it doesn't block my serenity and peace. So it's not a special thought, it's a totally neutral thought. So I just casually can forget it, just like, oh, I'm not married yet, that's a casual thought. Oh, yeah, you know, C Carrie Fisher hasn't sent me an intergalactic text yet, so it's a casual thought, forget about it. So you just let these things go. So paragraph three, to do these exercises for maximum benefit, the eyes should move from one thing to another fairly rapidly, since they should not linger on anything in particular. Now you can start to see what the you know why the Course in Miracles is spiritual genius. Like everything is equally neutral. Like you know I I come from a food addiction background. Like if there was like a, a chocolate cake on the table, I would stare at the chocolate cake. And I wouldn't take my eyes off it. Like I wouldn't be looking, I wouldn't like not be able to take my eyes off the red cushion or off the green plant. Like I'm, you know, if there was no chocolate cake, I would look at the green plant for just a millisecond, then be looking at the pillow for a millisecond. And then I'd be looking at the light bulb. You know, it's like it, everything's equally like neutral. Mm -hmm. But if there's a chocolate cake, then I would like intensely gaze at the chocolate cake and not take my eyes off it. So like the Course is saying here, uh, do these exercises for maximum benefit, the eyes should move from one thing to another fairly rapidly. This is what it's like when you're connected to God. When you're connected to God, like no, no external thing has the power to grab your attention or to make you obsessive. It's like, you know, so it's teaching you, no, if you are looking at something or thinking about something obsessively, then don't do that. You should be looking at everything equally and seeing everything as being equally meaningless. Mm -hmm. So it's teaching you. Uh, not not to not to gaze either internally or externally at things uh, for long periods. So the words, however, should be used in an unhurried and evenly even leisurely fashion. You know, my meaningless thoughts about the chocolate cake 
uh, are showing me a meaningless world. You know, as I look at the chocolate cake, I should look at it in an unhurried, um, leisurely fashion, and then I should be looking at the pillow in an unhurried, leisurely fashion. You know, the, there's nothing like in active addiction. There's like huge intensity and craving and and staring at the chocolate cake. So it's it, it, there's a totally different energy around it. The introduction to this idea in particular should be practiced as casually as possible. It contains the foundation for peace, relaxation and freedom from worry that we are trying to achieve. You see, I, you know, what, if, I, if I do these exercises with chocolate cakes or Carrie Fisher, as stated, and the other lessons of the Course in Miracles, eventually, like, it's a neutral thing, it's a meaningless thing. I can't be bothered to think about it, stare about it, it's totally uh, neutralized. Um, on concluding the exercises, close your eyes and repeat the idea once more slowly to yourself. Three pra practice periods today will probably be sufficient. However, if there is little or no uneasiness and an inclination to do, uh, inclination to do more, as many as five may be undertaken, more than this is not recommended. Now this is course 11 of A Course in Miracles, so we're still early on. We don't want to like piss the ego off so it stops the course by making it do, do it like 50 times today. So it, it, the course is sort of seeing that you're on lesson 11, you can probably handle three before your ego gets rebellious. But if you're in good spiritual fit condition, you might be able to do five on day 11 and still not get too, too stressed out by it because it's an ego deflation process. So I've been talking about this lesson from a um, love addiction uh, or codependency type thing. It's like the person is meaningless. You, when If they were in the room, then you'd, I'd look at them for a millisecond and look at the pillow for a millisecond, then look at the cushion for a millisecond. If I was like having obsessed, you know, I would not, I would cut my thoughts about thinking about them and then think about something else, think about something else. It's just all equally meaningless and, and neutral. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to break my habits of getting fixated or making anything special within my head. So everything that I'm obsessed about is important to me, is special, has to be gone through this process. Both in, and this, the course lesson is teaching like both your thoughts inside and what you look at outside must be rendered equally with your eyes closed and with your eyes open. So it's like if anything you're fixating on an image inside or whether you're fixating on an image outside, it's equally the same thing. You still need to like make it meaningless on the inside and the outside so that you can get to these states of grace and peace and flow and, and happiness. I was talking, to, you know, I often speak to a lot of, of addicts because I, I come from an addiction background. And, you know, the thing of like, a lot of addicts are like, if you're a love addict or a codependent, you know, you get so much juice, you get so much payoff, you get such a huge hit. Why would you let that go? But most people have had these, you know, these periods of serenity and peace and flow and happiness and feeling high self-esteem. That is a good connection to God. And you've got to know that this, you, want, you need to eventually know that that's the life you want. You know, let go of the drama, the chaos, uh, the cravings, uh, and the roller coaster, because you end up being undignified. You end up doing things which are which are dumb. All of those things which are, you know, which when you are connected, like by doing this these advanced course of miracles lessons, you're no longer allowing yourself to be run. You want to be in those peaceful, serene stable things where you have a lot of sanity. You'll find when you're in these places of peace and serenity, you can easily say no to things which are not useful or not good or healthy. So persevering and with the Course of Miracles, you know, I always recommend you don't have to do it perfectly. Just pick up the next lesson the next day.